we took a deeper look at what a local agriculture software company has to offer other ag businesses around the U.S. As snowstorms continue to hit Fargo, residents are urged to clear the street for snow removal workers. And a look ahead at what we can expect from the weather throughout this next week. Good evening and welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Malik Mitchell. And I'm Lydia Lafine. We have the latest campus and local news coming up in this evening's newscast, so you don't want to go away. Yesterday evening, NDSU students had a chance to tour a well-known Fargo software company in downtown Fargo. I got the opportunity to participate in the tour and get some awareness about what Bushel is all about. An agriculture software company based in Fargo that helps grow other agriculture businesses hosted a tour yesterday for NDSU students. That company is named Bushel. A group of students had the chance to tour the company's office building that held multiple floors and several types of workroom spaces. That's one of the big things, like adaptability is huge. So this office is very modular. We can sort of uh, position ourselves to whatever the task is at hand. Like, let's say we're really trying to get a piece of software over the hurdle and we need to just huddle and get together in a room or get together on a call and just batten down the hatches maybe order some sandwiches and just hammer it out like that. That could be a thing. This software company is a leading provider of software technology solutions for growers, grain buyers, ag retailers, protein producers, and food companies. However, what exactly does Bushel do? So Bushel is, um, we have kind of a conglomerate of applications and development software for farmers. So we help digitize the relationship that farmers have with the grain elevators. So right now, typically a farmer would come in to um, work with a grain elevator and they would have to write out a paper receipt and an invoice and wait you know, weeks to a month for a paper check to come to them. Our apps are digitizing all of that. When it comes to agriculture, technology is fairly new and can be challenging at times. However, Bushel still finds a way to become a good resource for ag businesses. Figuring out how we can set ourselves apart and be a resource for the farmers. Um, and really also, I think, too, you know, some users might not be used to using the technology. They might find it more frustrating. And agriculture and farming is important. So we don't want to, like, slow their process up, right? We don't want to make it harder for them to do what they're doing. So we have to find a way to create this really great software that's going to make things efficient, but it's also going to be very user-friendly. As an NDSU student, there's tons of ways to get involved in agriculture around campus and locally. So I would say, you know, coming here, getting involved in some of these clubs, making contact, we kind of talked about this earlier, networking with people that are in the industry. So um, whether it be Bushel or, you know, another agribusiness in the company, just really making those connections and networking with them. Um, so that you can have that pipeline built and those opportunities ready for you when you do graduate. If interested, make sure you visit MyNDSU.com to check out the clubs that hold these interests. For the Bison Information Network, I'm Malik Mitchell. It isn't too late. These clubs are still open to join. The NDSU student body elections are just a few weeks away, with voting opening up on April 4th. The presidential candidates started their campaigns Monday morning. They will spend the next weeks presenting their values and plans to you via social media, posters, and much more. In this year's elections, you will cast your vote for your next student body president, vice president, and student senators to represent you for the next academic year. The presidential candidates that are running are Kaylee Weigel, Anna Timmerman, and Maximus Swinson. These candidates will face one another for NDSU's annual presidential debate on March 28th in the basement of the Memorial Union. I encourage you all to attend and learn more to help solve our university's needs. And on Tuesday, the Student Activities Office invited students to celebrate Spring Equinox. This Spring Equinox is a joy holiday centered around rebirth and growth. The dark months are over and we're moving into warmth of the light. Because this is a season of illumination, spring brings clarity. This is the time to gain clarity on what you want to see grow in your life and what you want to harvest. 
Earlier this morning, the NDSU Chali Institute and Dakota Digital Academy hosted an all-day discussion panel covering the recent rise in AI language models, such as ChatGPT and Google Bard. The discussion panel featured speakers Mark Mills, a senior fellow of the Manhattan Institute, and Sean Riley, who is chief information officer for the State of North Dakota Information Technology Department. Topics discussed surrounded the place and impact of artificial intelligence on state law, education, the workforce, and more. The NDSU Graduate School and Research and Activity Organization are inviting undergraduates and first-year graduate students to attend an informational lunch to learn more about the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Program. This will follow a speaker event hosted by Dr. Muller Parker, a former program director for the National Science Foundation. Those participating will learn more about the program, application process, and other recommendations for a competitive application packet. It will take place in the NDSU Library's Center for Writers from 11.30 a.m. until 1. The 19th Annual Bison Leader Awards are on April 27th in Oshetti Shikoi Barroom. This is a night to celebrate the amazing accomplishment of very, various student organizations on the NDSU campus. Nominations are open from March 8th to April 15th. Next Wednesday, the NDSU Western Swing Dance Club will be hosting a bar dance in the Oshetti Shakawi Ballroom. If you do not know how to dance, this event is still for you. Lessons will begin at 7 p.m., which will then be followed by an open dance. The gathering will provide free food as well as a photo booth to capture the fun. This follows a rescheduling due to a snow day from last month. Next on this evening's newcast, the Fargo Theater has begun its 23rd annual Fargo Film Festival. Snow removal is needed on residential streets, and more when we come back. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Now for your local news. Last Tuesday, the Fargo Theater had begun its 23rd annual Fargo Film Festival. This event, dubbed the premier moving image event in North Dakota, features hundreds of independently made films from across the world. You can get all-inclusive passes for $150 or general admission for 12. The Fargo Theater will continue showings until this Saturday, March 25th. Get ready to hit the ice at the Moorhead Sports Center this weekend as the Animal Moorhead Ice Show takes place. This year, the theme is Minnesota Nice, featuring performances from Maxim Naumov, the 2020 U.S. Junior National Figure Skating Champion, and other advanced skaters. Everyone is invited to participate with tickets ranging from $5 to $8. This event begins at 7 p.m. this Friday and goes until Sunday. 
Public work crews in Fargo worked overnight this week removing snow to white and residential streets. The work was scheduled from Monday until tomorrow morning. However, with snowstorms still hitting Fargo, this may be extended. The snow removal areas will be from 12th Avenue North to 13th Avenue South and from Red River to University Drive. Residents in those areas are urged to move their vehicles off the streets. The NDSU Student Athlete Advisory Council will host a food drive drop-off next Tuesday. From 4 to 6 p.m., you can drop off, drop off those goods in the south parking lot of the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. NDSU Student Athletes will be collecting non-perishable goods for the Summit League food fight. This is a friendly competition between the league's members. This benefits food banks in each of their local communities. In exchange for food donations, NDSU SAC members will be handing out coupons to Sandy's Donuts and Chick-fil-A, two sponsors and NDSU Athletics supporting the food drive. Now for your national news. Bonner General Health, an Idaho hospital, said it will be closing its maternity ward and cut her ob obstetrical services on May 19th. The hospital's board president, Ford Alessayer, said in a statement, we have made every effort to avoid eliminating these services, but our challenges are impossible to overcome now. Without specifically referencing the state's post-Roe legislature, the hospital said that the legal and political climate was causing physicians to leave the hospital, and it was becoming difficult to recruit replacements. To reassure the public, Bonner General Health staff announced that they will continue delivering babies through mid-May, but has warned that, if the date, that the date may be pushed up if staffing changes. The hospital has since posted a list referring to patients to new OBGYN providers, with the closest being 30 miles away. This closure has, ra has been raising unrest for hospitals in states with similar legislature, creating fear that patients would not be able to get standard care in similar circumstances. Many are hoping that this will not become a trend. A recent report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention revealed the fungus Candida aris is spreading thoroughly through the U.S. Also known as C. aris, reports of cases linked to the drug-resistant fungus have doubled in 2021. Although C. aris does not present a threat to healthy people and infections are rare, it affects vulnerable groups of people and can be resistant to several drug classes. Next on this evening's newscast, we'll sit down with a student body presidential candidate for this year's election when we come back. My name is Becky Parker, and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies, and then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews. You're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. It's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. to go hungry but try as they might not every family can afford to put food on the table every day that's why the great plains food bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in north dakota ever has to go hungry Welcome back. I'm here with Kaylee Weigel, who's running for NDSU Student Body President for the next academic year. Kaylee, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so let's get to it. So kind of take me, tell me about yourself a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a fourth year on campus. I graduated high school in 2019, so that's when I came here. I'm an accelerated master's student, which means I'm getting both my bachelor's and master's in microbiology, which means I really like bacteria. They're very fun. <laughs> um, I've been pretty involved on campus since I got here, and I've had leadership positions in a bunch of different organizations. Um, and aside from that, I'm a member of Capital Okay. So tell me a little bit about your campaign. You know, we're in the midst of it, so tell me about 
about it? Yeah, absolutely. So our whole platform and our slogan is Your Vision, Our Mission. So we built our campaign off of student voice and student feedback, what students want to see. That's what Austin and I kind of determined was the most important thing for us to focus on. Yep. Um, so our campaign has three main goals. They're the three E's. The first is to engage. So we want to get, to get or we want, it's the first is to empower. So we want to empower student voice and give weight to student voice so they feel like they can actually make a difference on campus. The second is to engage. So we want to increase engagement in co-curriculars on campus within the Fargo-Moorhead community and then in conversations with faculty and staff. And then finally, it's to evaluate. So this kind of has two main parts to it. Uh, the first is to evaluate policies and practices that are set in place on campus right now to make sure that they're best practice and meeting student needs. And then secondly is just to evaluate ourselves because as president and vice president, action is the most important thing. And so evaluating and making sure that we're actually making progress and making change on campus I think is really important. So that's kind of our short little <laughs> elevator speech about our campaign platform. Yep. Okay, so what made it motivated you to want to run just in the first place? Yeah, that's a really great question. So a lot of people don't like to hear this, but I used to hate NDSU for like my first three years I take, here. I, take. I did not like it. I wanted to transfer. I just didn't feel like this place was my home. Once I joined student government, I realized that my voice really did matter and I had a platform to make change and I started to fall in love with NDSU. But I think there's a lot of students that don't feel like this place is where they belong and where they want to be and they just don't enjoy it here. And so I kind of have that unique perspective of not liking it and then starting to like it and then falling in love with it. So I think having a platform to continue to make change and help all students really love NDSU and the community is really important. So that's part of the reason why I decided to run. You know, that's not really a hot take. I've heard that from yeah. stories yeah. that they didn't like it and they joined either a club or like you said, joke right. student go. Yeah. So yeah, that's not a hot take. Uh, you know, the president presidential debate is next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You know, any initial thoughts on that? I'm really excited about it. Um, there's two other candidates running, so there will be three of us up there plus our VP, so there will be six people total. Um, and I've been promoting it really hard, so I hope there's a great student turnout and I'm just really excited to hear about other the, can the other candidates' platforms um, and just kind of get to talk about ourselves as well. Yep, you guys will still have a couple weeks to, you know, for your debate uh, uh, and campaigning. Where can students see you? Are you going to be setting up shops somewhere? I know downstairs yes, more union some clubs are. that is a really great question. So we're at table three in the Memorial Union every day from 8 to 5. Uh, we have stickers that we're handing out and we'll have candy next week, which will be really exciting. Uh, we also have an Instagram. It's Weigelx Anderson. We have a TikTok, which is like super popular, I guess. Um, that's also Weigelx Anderson. And then we have a website and a promotional video. And all of that's just linked in the bio of our Instagram and a link tree. So you can find all of that information right there. All righty. And any last, you, we want any students to know about anything, about your campaign, about voting, about anything? Yeah. Well, if you want to learn more about my campaign, you can check out the website. Um, I'm trying to keep it short and sweet because I think yeah. boring people with a 20 minute information <laughs> about our campaign yep. is yep. not everyone's cup of tea. So the information is there if students want to find it. Otherwise, voting is April 4th to April 5th. And I would just love to have all students vote. I think it's really important to make your voice heard and pick your representative leaders. And so be informed on all the candidates running and then cast your vote April 4th. All righty. Thank you, Kaylee. When we come back, Dash Mental will have your Bison Sports Report. Stay tuned. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student-athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're going to teach you about how to work with people. We're going to teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. 
we have a advisory board and that consists of people in the community who are like local business people and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication. The Bison Wrestling team finished the regular season with an impressive 11-3 record, but that didn't mean they were quite done yet. They played in the Big 12 tournament, and after that they had some impressive individual performances at the NCAA Championships in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which led to some nice accolades. Jared Franick and Michael Caliendo earned All-American honors at the tournament. Franick finished fourth in his 157-pound weight class after winning five matches, and Caliendo finished seventh in his 165-pound weight class after winning five matches as well. The Bison baseball season has been off to a rough start. Heading into this past weekend's three-game series against Houston Christian, they had a record of 1-16 and, and had lost 13 straight games. However, they turned that around on Saturday. In Game 1, the Bison fell behind 3 to nothing before they were able to score six runs on their own in the fourth inning. Unfortunately, they would fall behind again at the bottom of the inning. In the fifth, they would tie the game back up after an RBI single from Kyle Law. Then the Bison would take the game over in the seventh inning with three runs to secure a 10-7 victory to break the losing streak. Kyle Law had one run, two hits, and three RBIs, and Terrell Hugens had two runs, two hits, and an RBI. The second game on Saturday would be another taste of success as the Bison were able to hang on to a 6-5 victory behind a four RBI day for Terrell Hugens. And speaking of Terrell Hugens, he had one run, two hits, and those four RBIs. And Caden Schwabe had two runs, three hits, and an RBI. Sadly, the Bison would not be able to pull off a three-peat after a flyout brought in a run for Houston Baptist in the eighth inning to secure a 6-5 Huskies victory in Game 3 on Sunday. Peter Brookshaw had one run, three hits, and two RBIs, and Caden Schwabe had two hits and an RBI. The Bison are now 3-17, and, and they will kick off Summit League play this Friday against Omaha. The Bison softball team, meanwhile, has been on a roll lately, winning 10 of their last 12 games, including this past Saturday's game against Samford, in which the Bison scored the first seven runs of the game, and they never looked back in a 7-1 victory. Carly Gochias had three hits, two runs, and three RBIs, and Bella Dean had two hits, one run, and two RBIs. The softball team is now 16-11, and, and they will also kick off Summit League Conference play this Saturday against the Kansas City Roots. This past weekend, the track and field teams competed at the USF Bowls Invitational in Tampa, Florida. For the men, Benji Phillips won the javelin with a throw of 71.82 meters. Jacob Rodine won the 800 meter in a time of 1 minute 48 seconds. Josh Knutson won the 400 meter hurdles in a time of 52.59 seconds. And Peyton Smith won the 2000 meter steeplechase in a time of 5 minutes and 49 seconds. Meanwhile, for the women, Haley Schmidt won the javelin throw with a throw of 45.14 meters. Kendra Kelly moved the fourth fastest in school history in the 200 meter dash with a time of 23.84 seconds. Teresa Bolabrook moved up the third fastest in school history in the 100 meter hurdles in a time of 13.66 seconds. And Regan Basler ran a new personal best in the 15, 000, or 1500 meter with a time of 4 minutes and 28 seconds. The teams will be traveling out to California on Thursday to compete in the Mike Finelli Track Classic in San Francisco and the Stanford Invitational in Stanford. The women's golf team has started out their spring with two straight top five finishes. However, things were a little bit rougher this past weekend at the Red Rocks Invitational in Sedona, Arizona. The team finished 18th out of 20 teams. Elise Hoven and Catherine Monty finished tied for 50th place, and Maddie Hicks finished tied for 58th place. The Bison will be competing next Monday at the Golf Week and even Tuesday Intercollegiate in, the, in Pauley's Island, South Carolina. And that is all for Bison Sports Report. Now over to Coy Hartle with weather. It's finally spring, Coy, but it doesn't seem to be looking like spring anytime soon with the temperatures. Yeah, it is springtime on the calendar, but we are still seeing some of these colder temperatures and not quite getting into those spring temps just yet. If we take a look at our current conditions currently, we are seeing temperatures at 21 degrees Fahrenheit coming to us from the Hector International Airport. However, the wind chill does drop that down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, and then winds are out of the south at 9 miles per hour. Taking a look at what's going on for the hour by hour for the rest of the night and into 
clear tomorrow morning. We are seeing clear and mostly clear skies throughout much of the morning, and temperatures will be hanging around the 20s, and then they will drop off into the, into the upper teens as the early morning goes on. Taking a look at the skycast this morning, sun rose 7.24 a.m. sunset at 7.43 p.m. Gave us about 12 hours and 19 minutes of daylight there. It's always good to see those days getting longer and longer as we head towards the summertime months, even though we still have a few, a few months to go for that. And then taking a look at the moon phases, we are currently in the waxing crescent phase with the first quarter coming up on March 28th in just a few days there. Taking a look at today's almanac, today's high was 24, a low of negative 2, quite a bit below what we're used to seeing this time of year. Usually the average high is 40 with a low of 22 degrees. However, However, the record high was set in 1910 with 80 degrees, which is pretty impressive, and then a low of negative 16 in 1965. And taking a look at what's going on across the country, as you can see, see here, we are seeing much of the colder temperatures that we are seeing across the nation happening in the, locally in the Fargo-Marhead area in the North Dakota, Minnesota area there. However, as you move down south, when you go down by the river in Jeff City, Mo, and then as you go further south, that's where you start seeing the warmer temperatures. And if you are down south, you are seeing a lot more warmer temperatures coming to your city before too long. Taking a look at what's going on for the rain and snow within the next 48 hours. Again, not a whole lot happening in the North Dakota, Minnesota area here. A lot of the snow we'll be seeing in the Rocky Mountain areas to the west, and then a lot of the rain will be to, towards the eastern side of the country. But again, not a whole lot to worry about back home. Then as we take a look at the seven-day forecast, kicking it off with the weekend, tomorrow will be a high of 31 degrees with a low of 11, and then that will start to drop off as the weekend goes on, and Sunday we'll have a high of 23 and a low of 6. Then as the next week starts, Monday we'll have a high of 12, dropping off quite a bit there with a low of negative 4. Then Tuesday picks back up to 31 degrees with a low of negative 8, and then we are dropping off a little bit as we go into the rest of the week with a chance of 1 to 3 inches of snow on Wednesday and less than an inch on Thursday. This week we also got a picture sent in to us from Jeff in Holly, Minnesota. Nice little picture here of just some deer that were out in his front yard as the sun's going down, so that's always neat to see. Very interesting picture. Thank you for sending it in. If any of you watching at home see any interesting weather in your area, then be sure to snap a photo or grab a video and send it our way. You can submit those online on our website, and we'll be sure to put them in our next weather segment. Well, that's all I got for weather for this week. Back to you at the Desk Dash. So, Coy, I know we talked about this earlier, and the uh, we're getting close to a record here in North Dakota. Back in 1979, we had 152 days in a row of under 40 degrees weather and right now we are at 134 days in a row so we have a few more weeks yet but do you think we could get uh, beat that record oh yeah it's been quite a while since we've seen temperatures up in the 40s however i do think it might start to warm up especially maybe looking two weeks in advance so i don't think we'll quite break the record but it, it is it, these are temperatures that will put a little bang in your yin yang if you know what i mean i mean i think we're all ready for spring at this point i mean the snow is just piling up out there there is a lot of snow on the roads right now it's just it's really hectic for everybody right now so i bet we all can't wait for spring. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, that is all for tonight's show. We will see you again next Thursday, and thank you all for watching, and have a good night.